Hey, what's going on? It's Nathan Resnick with Product Sourcing School. Today we've got Will from Go Consulting. We're going to do a very deep dive on Amazon. Will runs the go to Amazon consulting agency. He helps tons of brands grow across Amazon. Will, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. So I want to get started. You know, a lot of people tuning in here, it's going to be their first time selling on Amazon. And so I kind of want to start with taking a step back before we dive really deep. You know, if you were going to start selling a product, you're trying to figure out what product to sell on Amazon, you know, can you walk us through that process right now? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things I definitely want to keep in mind when like choosing a product. Um, a few kind of steadfast rules and Obviously, there's exceptions and these rules can be broken, but some kind of standard things to live by. I wouldn't try to source and sell anything you can buy at like Target or Walmart. People subconsciously know where to buy those products. They know where to find those products and they tend not to buy them on Amazon. If you sell something that's not sold in those two stores, in a decent chunks of America, they have nowhere else to buy these things and they're forced to buy it online. So then they're already thinking about buying it from most likely you. So that's kind of one thing to think about. Another thing I like to think about also is um, figuring out kind of just the general um, competition of the keyword that you're going to be targeting and kind of just the general market to see if it's too mature, if it's not mature. And the way I've figured it out over time is using a revenue to review ratio. So the way this works is that you can use Viral Launch, Jungle Scout, um, any of those types of software that has revenue mm -hmm. estimation on there. And say you're trying to sell something like a umbrella. You search umbrella into Amazon and you add up for all of the revenue on that first page, all of the reviews on that first page and divide them by each other. And in general, what you're trying to figure out is is this too saturated already or is there still some sort of meat on the bone for me to go after? So right. if there is a, a thousand total reviews and there's a thousand dollars in total revenue, that's only $1 per review. That's probably a saturated market. It's going to be tough to get that many reviews. And if you even do, you're splitting a piece of pie that's a thousand dollars total. So it might not even be worth your time in the long run where I'll find some niches sometimes where there'll be a thousand reviews total on the front page and maybe $300,000 in revenue between all the listings on the first page. Got and it. so you go, okay, now there's 300 to one um, ratio of 300 reviews for every $1 on here. This is pretty sweet. You divide how many people on the front page by how many reviews you think, okay, how many reviews do I need to fit into the first page just to kind of stand alone here? What slice of pie can I take out of this? Is there a bunch of different players who have 7% of the market each? Or does one have 90% and then everyone splits up that last 10%? And kind of thinking in terms of, is this market still worth going after? How big is the pie total? And what slice do I think I could reasonably carve out for myself? And just to be kind of one of the other players in there. Right. I'm not thinking of world domination. I'm not thinking of how do I do the sexiest branding for this product. Right. I'm basically <laughs> just trying to figure out, is this actually even worth going after? And is this too competitive to go after before doing anything else? Got it. That's super interesting. I've never, you know, really dove into a revenue to review ratio, but I mean, I think it's a great starting point because I, I mean, I'm curious right now on Amazon, when you see a very saturated category, you know, do you think it's even worth competing in or it's okay, let's look at the data and let's look elsewhere. Um, because, you know, a lot of people in product sourcing school, they're very passionate about the products that they're launching. You know, they're debating whether to go on Kickstarter or Shopify or Amazon. And, you know, of course, a lot of these uh, people that have, you know, really kind of, uh, products that they're very passionate about, a lot of those categories are already saturated on Amazon. So would that make you steer away from Amazon as a channel or? It, it may. Um, I think that Amazon tends to be one of the hardest platforms to tell your story on and explain that you're passionate about marathoning, that you've ran marathons all over right. the world and that you created this company because you're so passionate about it. You just look like just another neoprene sleeve next to all the rest of them, but yours is three times as pricey. Got it. So if you're on Shopify, you can really have your embedded YouTube video mm -hmm. that they have to watch and this and that and that kind of thing. And so um, I think in general, you should be on Amazon because the longer you're on Amazon, the more it's going to be helpful in the algorithm. Um, you just might not make it your number one priority. It's right. fairly easy to set up a pro seller account 
send in a few hundred units into FBA just to stay in stock right. and just kind of have it on set it and forget it mode. But at least it's doing some sort of SEO in Amazon. It's doing some sort of SEO in Google. It's sending different kind of signals around the internet. And it's for people like maybe you and me who go on their website, see the product and go, well, I'd rather buy it on Amazon real quick. Yeah. It's there. Totally. It makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, Amazon definitely has that power from a logistical standpoint of, you know, prime people, you know, really love shopping uh, products that have Amazon prime just because they know the, you know, fulfillment experience is going to be so, so great. I, I want to dive deep in terms of growth on Amazon right now. You know, Amazon's becoming, I think it's now the second largest advertising platform in the world, if not the third largest. Is it, it, I don't know if it's second. I think it's third. third. It's uh, yeah, Google, Facebook, then them. They just passed okay, Microsoft. Then Amazon. But, I mean, Amazon's advertising platform is, is the newest out of you know, Google and mm. Facebook, and their growth has been incredible. I mean, is that the, way, the main way you're seeing products grow on Amazon right now in terms of ramping up PPC and really trying to get that ranking around certain keywords? That's what I'm mostly seeing. I hear all these awesome stories of people getting a bunch of influencers or go, getting viral and sending traffic to Amazon, those types of things. And for me, it just seemed tried and true. Um, get your sponsored product ads set up as well as possible in a way where it can be like somewhat automated because lately Amazon's been launching a new marketing beta like every month. Wow. Um, this latest one is um, offered to, I, I think, everyone on Seller Central and anyone who's been to your Amazon listing in the last 30 days, you can retarget them over and over again, and you're only paying per click, not per milli. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And, and, and so, like, is retargeting just on Amazon or across the web? Acro across their whole entire suite of um, wow. websites that they own plus their advertising network. Wow, that's And huge. that just, yeah, that just came out, like, a couple of weeks ago. So, it's like, okay push as much money as you can to that. It's never going to be cheaper than day one. Right. Exactly. Push as much money as in there can get those repeat customers up, yeah. get those people who weren't buying your product earlier kind of thing. And then once you're getting tired of that and you think you've exhausted your resources, I'm sure they've launched two more marketing platforms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm curious, you know, with most of the companies that you work with, are they also utilizing other advertising channels like Facebook and Google to drive traffic to their Amazon listing? Or is it mostly intertwined with Amazon's advertising platform? It is mostly entwined with Amazon's advertising platform. The um, combination of doing the Facebook ad plus the tracking plus the um, measuring of those metrics and seeing if it's a good ROAS and such, um, that just seems to be kind of a few more steps past a lot of what our clients are trying to do. Got it. Um, okay. They just, they're either selling things that like, they just don't think their market's going to be on Facebook or it right. just doesn't seem like it. And um, Amazon has just been their main, w Amazon ads have been their main way of driving traffic to their Amazon store for sure. Got it. At, yeah. And just 70 years of goodwill for some of these companies. Right. Totally. That makes a lot of sense. So let's say I'm launching a new product in Amazon tomorrow. I don't have any reviews. What's the best way to go about getting my first, you know, 10 reviews? That's where it's like, I go two different paths. One, if you have a decent amount of capital ready to get started and one where you don't. Because one where you have capital, you can do Amazon Vine, Amazon Early Reviewer Program, get those first couple of reviews coming in, pump a bunch of money into PPC, and at least use that as like a learning tool for keyword research just as much right. as driving traffic and such. And you get your first eight reviews from Amazon, start driving some traffic, and you can kind of take it the slow and steady way and kind of grow it as you want to with money. Um, if you don't have money, then it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be f friends, family, fools, going yeah. around asking everyone for help, anyone you know who can buy the product and get you a review just to get started. Um, you obviously want to just provide a good product at a good price. That's right. the easiest shortcut. Um, totally. But um, yeah, it's... And a lot of people are just kind of giving out free product at that stage, right? I mean... And that's where I'm, I'm totally against that type of okay. mentality yeah. of the go into a market that you see there's every single listing, the, the worst listing on it on the front page is doing $200,000. It's some sort mm -hmm. of supplement. And you're just doing the math where you're like, okay, if I just give away 150 units a day for the first 90 days, that's right. going to give me a certain BSR and this and that. And that just seems like you're, um, you're spending the same money you would have just spent on like more like legitimate advertising, right. but doing it in like a more unsustainable gray hat way. 
Got it. Makes sense. And it's like for our clients, stuff like that, we can just like never recommend that they do something that like could possibly get them suspended right. where we have obvious places where we could spend that advertising dollar. Yeah. I mean, cause you're either going to spend it in product costs or ad dollars and, and you're saying it's way smarter just to spend it in ad dollars, which, which makes sense. Yeah. And I think that it's going to eventually get you more real customers who like your stuff over time. Right. opposed to just kind of giving that quick jump start to get your product in front of customers yep. and then trying to convince them after the fact that you're legit. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So can you tell us uh, about like some, some many crazy like Amazon growth stories that you've, you know, experienced the past few years? I mean, is there any like just rocket ship stories that, well, that you can share? Yeah. Here's a kind of a best case and worst case scenario um, that happened to my brother and I about in like 2013. So we were, um, talking to our cousin and he had just broken his foot ice fishing up here in Minnesota. Wow. And um, he had to buy a knee scooter. And so it's like a little scooter you put your yeah. foot up on, you push yourself around. And he said cheapest place he could get it was 300 bucks. Wow. And my brother and I are just kind of look at it and we go, this is kind of like a worse version of like a children's bicycle. Right. So like the nose aren't 300 bucks. So what's going on here? So we look it up on Alibaba. We get a quote real quick. It's about 60 bucks. So we're looking at the container cost, this, this, and that. And we're like, okay, we can sell these things. No problem for 160 bucks a piece, 240 fit in a container. This is a slam dunk. We're going to make right. some good money on this kind of thing. Well, what happened was a combination of just terrible things. Um, we sold about eight to 10 units. I think the very first day. Uh -huh. And it's, so it's a typical like 30 days of manufacture, 30 days of ship. Right. So already day one, we've sold like 10 units and we're, we're basically out of stock, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, okay, this is a good thing. So now we're like, okay, so we've sold, have one day of sales. Do we buy the second container already? Right. And then, so we're like, yeah, I guess we have to. And like, let's throw in a couple other random SKUs that they carry. Right. We've got some dog wheelchairs too, just to see what's going on. <laughs> and cause we're going to order another one. So we start sh shipping them out like crazy. We're selling like 12 to 15 units a day. And we're making about 40 bucks a, a unit. So it's like some pretty decent money on yeah. just like one SKU. Um, it's going well. We got the other container in the works. We got the cash flow ready. Everything's going well. We're like, all right, we got our FDA cert certification stuff. Right. We're like, okay, this is actually kind of a sweet little moat we got. No yeah. one wants to sell direct to customer these kind of medical products. Right. They usually have some convoluted supply chain. It's going well. Well, it turns out that everyone needs their knee scooter for about two to three weeks. Oh, jeez. And so about three to four weeks in, we just got like all of them returned to us. Wow. Jeez. Oh my god. What are you going to do with it around the house? If you got right. three days. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. Huh. And so we had to um, have someone who was like typically like helping us ship out boxes and stuff. Right. Their job was to like disassemble and reassemble kits because they would return wow. it, but it'd be missing a seat. They return it, but it'd be missing a wheel. The brakes wouldn't work, that kind of thing. And so yeah. then we had quickly before that um, second container got on the ocean, we had them stuff the outsides of it with brand new cartons. Got it. Wow. So then we could sit there and put these new kits together yeah, and reach them yeah. in. And then that was the last ever container we bought of knee scooters because wow. it was That's like, crazy. it went from this really slick, awesome, cool, like opportunity yeah. to within like 30 days of like, okay, yeah, let's not sell this product anymore. Yeah, it was yeah. profitable and such, but like, I don't want to deal with this. It's this right. one, skew, we had 1200 SKUs at the time. So this one SKU is taking up half our day. Wow. I had 1200 SKUs. That's amazing. So, so how does one uh, manage 1200 SKUs on Amazon? I mean, is it just uh, like, what do you, what do you use? It's, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's using that kind of same strategy I was just mentioning earlier of okay. the going back to your supplier and seeing what else they have. And luckily this was like actually a manufacturer. Got it. So um, they actually did just manufacture a bunch of um, type wheels, medical right. products. So that was pretty easy to kind of go back to those kind of yeah. suppliers and be like, okay, you, we got one product that works well. I'm right. sure if we got all 25 year products, it would be pretty quick. Yeah, and then you just need to get an inventory management system like stitch i've used in the past a couple different times okay. um stitch labs will not only allow you to track it um through shopify but then you can track it through amazon you can set it up so it does like the automatic fulfillment for your shopify store through amazon it. cool. and it allows you to like input purchase orders and stuff so you can get like a per unit cost from the very beginning wow that's awesome so i, I guess i'm curious like how does one go about launching 1200 SKUs. I mean, are you having to write product descriptions, like Amazon descriptions for every single SKU or? 
No, not exactly. Okay. Um, so like with the, like a lot of it was us just copy and pasting whatever's on the website just Got to it. get it up as fast as possible. Yeah. Like that knee scooter I was telling you about that sold, I think whatever, 10 units the first day, mm -hmm. it didn't have a review. Wow. It's just that everyone else was $350 right. and a lot of them were merchant fulfilled and ours is $175 prime. Got and it. so when we're $200 cheaper than the next person, some people just can't help themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. That makes a lot of sense. So right now, I mean, how do you see the bigger sellers growing on Amazon? Is it just by expanding their SKUs? Is it by uh, increasing ad spend? I mean, like how, how are people really growing right now on Amazon? I think expanding SKUs is the easiest by far. I think okay. that um, um, going from two to four SKUs is like the easiest way to double your revenue. Yeah. It just becomes a cash flow constraint. Okay. And so then that's where, that's the kind of unfun fun part of FBA. Okay. Uh, people watching this most likely are in the fun part yeah. where you're looking at products and you're launching it and getting sales and that kind of stuff. The unfun part is when your sales are too good and you have to start trying to get loans. Right, to try to yeah. get more products and stuff like right. that. And that's where it becomes a lot more difficult. That's where it becomes like business business from like yep. side project to business business where you're starting to take out substantial loans to yep. buy containers of stuff that hasn't sold yet because you're confident enough because your last four products have been killer. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think that's such an interesting, you know, really point right there where a lot of people as they grow, they become cash flow constrained where they don't have enough money to put into their product, but they don't have enough money to, you know, spend to, to grow their business. And it's such a balance right there. I mean, and when you're starting out too, you can't really get, you know, payment terms from your supplier, you know, they're not going to give you a payment term uh, on, on new business, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense. Um, so, so I guess I'm curious, like, right now in the Amazon world, I mean, the main growth channel is primarily just the advertising through Amazon and then, you know, diving deeper into Amazon advertising. You mentioned some of the like um, new seller review products they have coming out. I mean, what else has been really interesting in that ecosystem for you to see? Um, the other thing that I've seen them kind of do in beta and I haven't seen them fully launch. I've just kind of heard rumors of it is having kind of that's a little bit more open to the world. And uh, allowing them to, um, honestly, this is not, might not be relevant for everyone listening, but um, Amazon Pixel to sell stuff that's not physical products. Oh, wow. Interesting. That would be yeah. kind of the next big step where it'd be like, well, I saw someone buy tires, so I'm going to um, do my auto repair place and right. do advertising them. Or they bought this ventilator, so I'm going to do this health insurance. Ad. Right. Interesting. Wow. That's crazy. Um, so they can reach market across their... Uh, buyer you know segment basically and when they can anonymize the buyer and just do people who purchase this product it seems a lot less kind of intrusive definitely because it's still kind of like this total like randomized group of people kind of yeah. thing well I, I think the data that uh you know amazon has on us and just the world in general is is pretty crazy it's it's incredible so then, yeah, that would be kind of the next thing is like mixing then like maybe brick and mortar plus right the the experience where it's like you buy your fish tank but then you pick it up at the store and they help you install it or wow. you know what i'm saying it's kind of services yeah. built in because they yeah, have the services kind of some of the products that i buy sometimes now where it's like pay you know 80 or 100 dollars extra to have it like professionally installed type of thing you know? yeah they need to kind of revamp that i've yeah. seen it where like you try to buy like an xbox and they're like right. 80 bucks to professionally install it and it's like a yeah. power cord and an hdmi port yeah um, yeah yeah exactly so yeah they, they need to revamp that a little bit but um yeah that's something that we talk we talk to just because we're tend to be in the Midwest and be right. more kind of blue collar type businesses we work yeah. with. Um, a lot of them keep asking, how can they sell on Amazon while still allowing like their handyman and installers to get their cut for, uh, and like they haven't fully like an affiliate code, but yeah. then they carry it on an iPad or wow. fully figured out that thing, but that's kind of, but Got yeah, it. to go back to your original question advertising has been driving the majority of sales wow. that and just um brand recognition in general totally. which i don't i don't know what to exactly tally if it's instagram if it's facebook right. what they're doing but when people search your exact when we see branded searches right. and how high they are it's like obviously they came in here with crazy intent and we just had totally. to make sure it was easy for them yeah, so they've built social media presence across, you know, Facebook or Instagram, like you're saying, and then people are actually searching for that brand on, on, on Amazon. I mean, yeah. probably the best example is like, you know, Kleenex. It's tissue paper, but everyone calls it Kleenex. You know, you're searching for Kleenex, whereas, you know, it's actually just tissue paper. But they've branded it so well that people actually call it uh, a Kleenex. It's, it's incredible. Yeah.
Well, Will, thanks so much for hopping on and doing this deep dive with us. If people want to, you know, follow up and ask more questions, how can they get in touch? Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at WTJERN and uh, Will at GoConsulting.com if you have any questions. Awesome. Well, Will, thanks again and I uh, really appreciate the time here. Yeah, thanks for having me.